Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my new Playa del Carmen virtual StreamYard studio with Dr. David Churning. And David, what is up, brother? How are you? How are you doing, Jay? Thanks for having me on. It's awesome to have you. So let me give you guys his bio real quick, guys. He is the founder of Phagen Corp, which is a precision medicine biotechnology company that has discovered and pioneered the technology to control endogenous bacteriophages for treatment-resistant infections. Uh, He's a very interesting guy. We're going to have a lot of cool talking points here today. Uh, a lot of uh, esoteric slash consciousness, spiritual spiritual stuff. So uh, again, I love these type of conversations. David, as I've been doing on the Jay Campbell podcast now in this new world, new order, new realm, whatever you want to call from the last three years, I like to get people's opinions and ideas on where we're going as a species. Um, you know, again, based on whatever your interpretation of the last three years is, I mean, a lot of people call it the scamdemic. Uh, you know, the fraud, the heist, whatever you want to call it. I mean, where do you see society going from here before we obviously talk about the talking points that we have? I mean, are you a pro human? It's going to get better. We're going into the golden age or are you not buying humanity at this point? Yeah, if I had to invest in something, it would not probably be humanity right now. (laughs) But uh, you're not long humans. But I do think that there's a a big segment of the population over the last three years that have woken up. Yeah. You know, I, as a doctor, you know, I have treated only the worst cases for almost 30 years. Right. uh, About 96, 95% of our patients have come from other States and countries having already exhausted everything mainstream medicine could do for them and and everything, every other kind of healer could do for them. So it's like, what I would see was like people would, and I'm exaggerating, but I would see people that would say, uh, one person even literally told me that God delivered them from organic food and they were so happy now with their Twinkies and Fruit Loops. That's not me exaggerating. That was yeah. exactly what they said because people didn't, they didn't seem to understand why we live a life like this. Right. Why right. we want to um, actually eat clean, energetically alive food instead of prepackaged, uh, processed, dead food, you know, energetically yeah. dead, nutriently dead food, you know. And um, so I think the last three years, if anything, has um, clarified who people are yeah, um, in their core, you yeah. know, to, it, it's not as fun, such as watching our favorite sports teams in the old days. You remember, we just watched them and we picked them based on the uniform or the city yeah. or their how how good looking they were, how, how well they played. And now we have politics on their helmet and everything else. So it's, I, uh, it's representative though of the, of the plight of mankind right now is it's, it's very split away. Yeah. You now know who your neighbor is for real. You know who they, not just who they show you, but who they are Yeah, and um, who they're likely going to be. And there's a whole segment of people um, that now understand why, uh, you might want to pull away from technology. You might want to pull away from the convenience of pharmaceuticals and start right. realizing that it n- almost 100% of pharmaceutical medicine is what I call a drug-induced illusion of health. It might as well be magic because if you take that pill away, at any point you realize underneath that pill you still have your illness and usually it's gotten worse. Yeah. So if you try to take that illusion away, the reality is – your doctor has to increase the dosage periodically because the illness is continuing to grow. Yeah. And so if the body, mind, and spirit are all interconnected and all interdependent, I think as you would agree, right? 
Your body, mind, and spirit are all interconnected. If I create the illusion of health in the body with a pharmaceutical, and I mean the suppression of symptoms only, whether that's uh, suppress, I mean, making it look like your thyroid works well by giving you something to, you know, bump up your thyroid function artificially, or your heart medicine, or your chemo, anything you want to name. If I suppress and create the illusion in the body that you're well when you're actually sick, then the mind is affected and the spirit is affected. So you're, people say, well, I'm a much better spiritual person because of the illness I've been through. And I'm like, yeah, but the, the illness woke you up to striving to be something more than just human. Yeah, yeah. This suit that we're wearing. Yeah, exactly. But, the, meat, the meat suit. <laughs> but the reality is, um, you know, do the things naturally, pull away from this technology that's creating this electromagnetic soup. Yeah. The surveillance systems that we're having in our whole house now is smart everything's. It's unreal. And, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> you know, go, revert to natural fiber clothing, revert to clean, healthy foods, grow your own foods, you know, make life decisions based on survival of, of a, a way of life that is rapidly disappearing. And I think there's a huge segment of the population that is starting to wake up to why would you want to not do what they're wanting you to do? Yeah. Where is, and they're waking up to the direction that we're being heard in. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people that I talk to are, are Christians and they, they follow the Bible. And so the Bible refers to us as sheep. Right. <laughs> Anybody right. that's been around sheep, that's not a compliment. You know, yeah. No. Actually just get slaughtered. And I know my, uh, well, I had a family member that had sheep and, they lost 42 sheep one year to wild dogs and coyotes because sheep won't, they just won't run away. They'll just they're, stay there and get slaughtered. They're made to be shorn. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you just said a lot of things, a lot of stuff to unpack there. Um, we're, we're definitely in hundred percent alignment, uh, both energetically and spiritually. Um, I like to say, David, that um, there's two, the world is bifurcated now. And we have what I call people like us that are empowered, sovereign, and free. We're personally accountable. You know, we realize that everything that happens to us is based on our choices and we have to take ownership for it. I like to say it's your fault. Take ownership. It's your fault. Maybe using the fault is a negative connotation, but if you are, you know, that awake and aware that you can actually say, I take ownership. And if this happens to me, it's my fault, then you are empowered. And then we have the other half, and it's not half, as you know, it's probably 80% of the people that are completely, you called it earlier, you know, delusional. I call it the illusion of delusion or the delusion of their illusion where they don't want to wake up. It's what you said. It's they want to be hooked into the cloud. You know, these are the people that if you talk to them about the metaverse and how the metaverse will just take away all ownership of personal responsibility, they're like, how do I sign up? Right. You know, I want to be a giant, disgusting, fat person who eats, you know, every, anything I want. I never have to exercise. I never have to take any kind of accountability of the decisions I make. I want to sign up for that plan, right? Again, these are the cloud-based video game types. And there are 80% of society and humanity. And again, they don't take personal accountability or ownership. They're totally disorganized. They're slovenly. Again, no judgment, not a condemnation. It's just a, it's a species type. And so, that 80, let's just call them 80%. And the 20%, which is, as you said, has a gro is a growing number because people are waking up to what's been happening to them or what's been happening probably forever. It just, you know, we, we didn't have the technology to glamorize it like we do now. But that bifurcation, um, Doc, is where we're going. And for me, it's, as you, as you know, I mean, I've already moved to Mexico. I mean, I'm preparing, I'm proactive you know, I see what's happening in the States. I see what's happening in the West. I see what's happening in quote unquote democratic nations like Western Europe. Can I mean, Canada is gone. I mean, there's so many people moving to Mexico from Canada, but where do we go? You know, and again, I don't want us to rabbit hole or sidetrack from our conversation, but it's like people like us will not be living in the major cities for much longer right. because the major cities will be these technocratic metaverse type of, you know, cloud, you know, again, what Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil want, you know, the transhuman bull BS without me going deeper on that, you know, that's, that's where the major cities are going. And it's not just going to be in the United States. It's going to be in all the major, you know, first world, you know, urban population centers. And that's what they want. And it's all low vibration. It's all technology. It's like you said, it's electromagnetic frequency and radiation. 
total disturbances to your biofield. Not, none of it is healthy. So, right. you know, the world is bifurcating and it's, it's happening fast. And so to me, it's like, well, where are we all going to end up being? I mean, I can see us living on islands, mountain communities, communes, but it's what you said, you know, going back to nature, mm -hmm. you know, detaching from the Borg or from the cosmic cosmology of techno of technocracy, you know, these damn phones and these wireless devices. I mean, clearly technology is giving you and I the benefit of having a conversation between Tennessee and Mexico, but ultimately it's also, you know, disturbing human. It's discerning right. the human connection and the element that we have as, again, divine, sovereign, empowered beings uh, with spiritual, you know, destinies and souls. And, and it's just, it's, it's so weird to watch it like in real time, how fast it's working or how fast things are changing right now. But, it, but it, I would definitely say this too. It's, it's never been more, in my opinion, of a fascinating time to be alive because I, if you're aware I, of this, you can, agree. Observe it. yeah, you yeah. can observe it. Yeah. It's kind of interesting because as you pointed out, tech technology has definitely advanced us forward. So that's not necessarily what I'm saying is, you know, stop using a tractor, right. Plow your field, stop using a car, go back to horse and buggies. And that's not really what I'm saying as much as minimize, you know, the technologies that you're exposed to. Right. Uh, exactly. In our house, we completely hardwired everything. Nice. You know, so it's like nice. all ethernet, you know, we, we, when we buy a house, we're always looking for um, the electromagnetic pollution on our um, EMF meters and RF meters that we carry around. The realtors look at us funny as I'm like scanning to see where the nearest tower is. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so we don't get good cell service, but so what? I'm like, well, yeah. hey, I don't have good cell service. I love you gotta it. Make a, you got to make a choice. I mean, when yeah. I was living, dude, when I was living in locale, I was in Murrieta. I'm sure you know where Murrieta, Temecula is. You know, it's wine country in Southern California, right north of San Diego. And I was living in the mountains at 1,800 feet. And it was amazing. I had a beautiful house, had everything you could want, every creature comfort. But I had three 5G towers within three miles of me, even, oh. even there. Yeah. And my, I would get headaches in infrequent times, like in the middle of the day, standing, you know, like I am now in front of my, my, my iMac when I was creating or producing content or whatever I was doing. And I'd have to go out in my backyard and ground for 20 minutes, David. I mean, I had to. We had a house uh, that we just moved out of that we had a different kind of meter that we were using to uh, detect the electromagnetic radiation. And it was, it was on that one, it was like very low. And we're like, woohoo, look what we got. We got this safe house. Then we got a different kind of meter, one of the better ones that shows exactly what kind of electromagnetic. And it's unreal how much bad, how bad and it, it is. It was off this chart. So it was over 10,000 on the meter and you shouldn't be over 35. And I was like, when I'd be in my office, like you're talking about, I'd be working. Yes. I yes. might work, I don't know, six, eight hours a day, writing something I'm writing or doing whatever I'm doing yep. in my office. Yep. And my head, like you said, would be just like buzzing for like three days and it'd feel really funky and weird. And I'm just like, oh, and I cannot be in that office. You know, that was the worst part. And this was after we'd already painted, you know, the walls with the black EMF blocking paint. And we put, we did everything we could. And it was still about a 1700, even with all the measures we took to block the EMFs in that house. So we just got out of there. I mean, I mean, but see, here's the thing, like, you know, people like you and I know this and as you know, and again, I'm speaking to my audience right now, this is not conspiracy anymore, right? Conspiracy theory. It's anal, it's analysis, right? There's massive amounts of PubMed peer review data that shows that 5G just decimates biological life. It kills pretty much everything. This is not again, conspiracy theory anymore. You know, it used to be in that realm, but it's not anymore. We have data. You know, uh, wh who's the guy that wrote the book? It's amazing. The Electric, the electric Rainbow. Um, uh -oh. Arthur Furstenberg. That article, I mean, that book is phenomenal. And he studied the last 120 years, you know, as t technology has expanded. First, it was radio waves. And every time there's like a, you know, a quantum leap, there's a massive biological die off. Mm -hmm. The trees, the fauna, the birds, you know, the indigenous animals to the local localized area where they, you know, increase the frequency or the signal. So this is not conspiracy theory. This is analysis. But yet, David, I mean, how many people have the means, the wherewithal, and of course, ultimately, and most importantly, the awareness to what we're talking about? It's still a fringe element of like whack jobs. Oh. People are like me and you. Right. <laughs> 
You know, and, and that's what we were trying to do is wake some people up to the idea of taking personal responsibility. Right. You know, even if all you have is a, is a porch off the side of, a, um, off of your apartment that you could plant some vegetables or something, that you yep. can actually start taking some responsibility for your own reality. Um, if you have the ability to get out of the big cities, get out of the big cities. I mean, I just... I don't, I, we, we just can't fix everything for everyone, even from a physical um, medical perspective. But um, all we can do is just over the years, just integrate more things. Um, exactly right. I mean, such as your personal care products. I mean, if you can't pronounce it, uh, what's in that ingredient list of uh, your personal care products, you, if you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your skin because it's absorbing through your skin into your tissues of your body. You know, I'll give you a, for instance, I went to, uh, I was flying and I was so tired and I saw, I had a layover, so I saw a massage place in the airport. And so I went and had just a foot massage and sit in the little massage chair, just a break, you know. And I said, do you use, I don't know, I, I said fragrance-free massage oil or whatever. She goes, oh yeah. Well, I'm telling you about a month later, I was in my sauna. I hadn't done the sauna in forever. And that lotion was coming out of my skin a month Unreal. later. I mean, it stank so bad when I got home. I couldn't tell that it stank because the whole place stank, you know? So it was like, is it the lotion or is it just the smell of the massage? Well, I mean, it's, it Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. You know, just that point or that story just tells you like, how bad are we being assaulted? Mm -hmm. You know, chemically, it's a, as I like to call it, it's a full spectrum assault to right. our biological systems from everywhere, from the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the plastic that we drink out of, the shit they spray in the skies, the 5G electromagnetic dirty radiation. I mean, you know this. And again, you know, this is, this is, you know, this freaks people out when you say this, but Tesla's energy is dirty electromagnetic discharge. All of those cars that people sit in and drive, they're shortening their lifespan. I mean, right. I've had the world's, you know, leading EMF, uh, technologist on the show and he talked about what driving a Tesla does to your biological cells. It's horrible. There's no harnessing. There's no, uh, what do you call it? What are those things called? The, um, shielding. And yeah, the shielding, but what do they call them? The, um, you know, the, the, it's a, it's a cave. I forget what they're called, but you know, they, it shields all the EMF, mm -hmm. a Faraday cage. Oh yeah. Faraday. Like they could easily put a Faraday cage around the electromagnetic unit in the Teslas, but then they wouldn't make any profit, Dave, and they wouldn't be able to rip people off. You know, it's, it's all corporatocracy, dude. At the end of the day, well, the corporations are causing these problems. You know, there's some interesting research, like you said, this isn't just um, some alternate reality that we're trying to present, it's actually research. And they've actually, one of the most compelling studies I remember seeing was done by a kid doing a science project. It was just a science project they did and they put a board coming off the house that went from the smart meter on the house and went out, I don't know how many feet, and he planted or he had all these little pots of plants, all of them the same. And the further away from that meter they got, the better the plant did. Close up, it didn't thrive, it didn't grow, it didn't do anything. We, we now know that it actually promotes the growth of mold and bacteria and stuff. So you get these people saying, well, I don't have a choice. Well, you have to shield those, shield those devices, those smart meters from your house. But, um, you know, you, you're right about, to some degree, people need to take some personal responsibility of educating themselves. And I know your listeners are used to hearing this stuff, but they need to just incrementally, if they can't do it all, you know, change to free and clear organic, you know, laundry detergent, hand soap, anything like that, deodorants, toothpaste. Like when toothpaste was first created, I mean, like recently created, it was like, they should. They would have had a skull and crossbones on it because it was poisonous. Even yeah. now, 
if you, I think if a child eats like a, I don't know, like a tablespoon of toothpaste, you have to call poison control because it actually has formaldehydes and all these other things. I had a Vietnam vet that told me, and he was firsthand knowledge, they knew that if American soldiers were killed, they didn't really have to do anything with the bodies for several days because we're so pickled, right? preserved with all those things you can't pronounce in the That's food. exactly system. right. Yeah, and the, and the Vietnamese soldiers, they had to do something with them right away because they would begin to decompose almost immediately. Isn't that unbelievable, dude? The United States, is, the USA is the most um, attacked, biologically onslaughted species. Are you, I should say humans in the USA. I know, dude. It's, I mean, you know, but we're really preaching to the choir at this point. I mean, now really, I think for us, and, you know, we'll finish the podcast with solutions, right? And that's kind of what you were here to talk about anyway. So like, I, I do want to hear your, I want to, I want to hear about the new hope initiative. Okay. Um, you know, well, which for illnesses like Lyme and Parkinson's and MS and chronic fatigue and autoimmune disorders. Okay. Well, for those that don't really know me, I've actually been in this industry for about 30 years and I've written four books uh, I was the, on Lyme disease and the natural treatment of people with Lyme disease uh, going back into the 90s, you know, I shook Willie Bergdorfer's hand. I, you know, rubbed elbows and shoulders with the top brass in the Lyme world. I presented my the first documented research at the International Tick-Borne Diseases Conference of a natural product. Um, first guy on the planet to do that, to actually have laboratory proof that a natural product actually worked. And that was in 1999 at the International Tick-Borne Diseases Conference in New York City. So fast forward, I've, I've treated thousands and thousands of people uh, from all over the world. And, um, you know, in all my books, I used to say, well, we can't kill them all, but it's not necessary. How, why would I say that? Because I could actually get people back to their normal life, even though I knew I couldn't kill every last single bacteria. Yeah. OK, so it's not the absence of these infections that creates health. Health is a function of the optimally functioning body. Right. Right. And so fast forward in 2019, I had an epiphany as I was reading an article on my way to the ILADS conference in Boston. ILADS is the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. It's one of the, the more um, like they're the opposite of the Infectious Disease Society, which is, you know, they don't acknowledge chronic Lyme and stuff like that, whereas ILADS does. And I do as well. You know, these people still have all these barrage of uh, bacteria that we generally lump now into Lyme disease. It's more accurate to maybe say tick-borne diseases, you know, as opposed to Lyme disease. Because in the 90s, yeah, everybody thought it was one bacteria that was causing Lyme disease, the Borrelia. And now we understand that it's a whole host of these different infections all being activated at the same time. So I, I had an epiphany reading a science, scientific American journal I just picked up at the airport uh, newsstand. And as I'm, it was an article on bacteriophages. Now, bacteriophages are viruses that only infect other microbes. They don't infect your human body, I mean, right. your human cells. So most people go, oh my gosh, it's a virus, run away. No, I mean, this is actually what makes up your body to a large degree. I think there's something like a hundred billion phages per milliliter of saliva in your mouth, okay? There, uh, there's so many phages on the planet, they say, that if it was the size of ladybugs instead of the size of a virus, it would completely cover the earth and be 31,000 miles deep. That's how many phages are on the planet. So it's an impossibility that there exists any kind of infection that isn't already infected with its own type of phage. We call it like a bacteriophage when it attacks and uses a bacteria as a host. Now, why do they use uh, bacteria as a host? Well, they, a phage is a virus and virus does not uh, self-replicate. So you have to have a host to replicate more phages with. And that's so, if you have staph bacteria, you know, like everyone knows about MRSA now, it's a methicillin resistant staph and aureus, right? So 5 million people die every year. My from, wife's mom died from it. 5 million, just in 2020 I saw, died from MRSA, just MRSA alone. Okay, it's, so it's a man. big problem. I mean, when, uh, when penicillin was first mass produced, 
it only took, I think, about four to, I don't know, debatably, I've seen a couple of different um, references. One said within two years, they were already beginning to see the bacteria um, becoming resistant to the penicillin. And definitely within 20 or 40 years, the whole world was reporting the same thing. And so they've been on this pursuit of constantly killing and finding new ways to tweak the antibiotics to try to kill the bacteria. Well, it turns out almost uh, debatably 57 to 90% of the cells in the body are actually bacteria. They're not even your own cells. So we're antibios, antibiotic is meaning anti-life. Okay, it's wiping exactly. out huge populations of beneficial bacteria in this pursuit. And it was easy. It's kind of like the easy of chemistry as now technology is the easy of this day. Okay, exactly. you really don't have to do anything. You just, you don't have to modify your life. You can just take a pill, right? Yeah. So I- Easy button approach. So over these 30 years, I've developed a technology that is morphed into something I call biospectral emission sequence testing. It's a nice. frequency Raman-like spectroscopy testing. We can actually write electromagnetic sentences to figure out what's going on in the human body. So the human body isn't the pieces and parts we thought it was even. So, you know, we think of the body as like um, you take a pill, it bangs around, eventually ends up wherever it's going in the body or that the nervous system runs the body. Now we know that a nerve impulse can only go as fast as 400 miles an hour. Yep. Way too slow to be what's running everything. Now we understand that 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 the body is running itself via biophotonic light. Okay. Right. We are nothing more than light, actually, at base. Acid. Right. You we know, are, right. tissue is arranged in liquid crystalline right. fibers, right? Exactly. So we've got like LCD watches in the old days. Well, you have LCD, not LCD, but liquid crystalline fibers is what the body works off of. So all of this, it's almost like the software of the body. So if you can access the software to diagnose, you can also access the software to figure out what should fix it. So right. I came up with a, a strategy to where I could actually use frequencies in, a, in this very specific way, the biospectral emission sequence testing, to create the impetus, almost like software that only the type of phage, bacteriophage that I'm targeting can download. That's the way I like to talk about it now. It's like software that only that type of phage can download that causes them, instead of using their host as a reproductive um, mechanism, they would actually kill that reproductive host outright. And so you can tell when it happens in some infections, it's like the complete annihilation of that bacterial population within just 24 to 48 hours. It's incredible when it works. Nothing in the history of medicine has ever been able to wipe out 100% of a, a targeted bacterial population and yet not touch the human body, not even need the immune system to participate except for the macrophages, which are kind of like Pac-Man, you know, the old game Pac-Man, macrophages yeah. along and they gobble up the bacteria. Well, when they get there to gobble up this dead bacteria that the phages killed, guess what? It's just a cloud of dust. It's essentially, okay, and the Pac-Man just comes up and um, just cleans up the mess. But beyond that, you don't get a Herxheimer reaction. You don't, from the Lyme anyway, you don't get the, the die-off reactions that people are used to with Lyme, you know, which is called a Herxheimer reaction or a Herx. And, you know, I hear all kind of weird things, you know, online and from patients sometimes who say, well, I drank milk and I Herxed. <laughs> <laughs> or you reacted, but you didn't Herx. You know, or I did, a, I did such and such and I hurt. And it was just like, I don't know, I, you know, I had Hilarious to talk. Talk. got too much sunlight and I hurt or something, you know, but it's like, no, I mean, this whole like red badge of courage that's happened around this whole illness of like going, if I feel worse, then it means the treatment is working. Right. Okay. And with phages, you don't have to hurt first to feel, you know, the effects. Now, what we're finding now that we can, we're way over 100 different types of bacteria that we've used this against. We've even killed tapeworms. We've killed roundworms with phages. This isn't even in the textbooks that you can do this, okay? But it doesn't take that much to kind of go, I wonder when presented with somebody with a mold infection, let's say, um, 
specific, say, aspergillus. Well, as a doctor, I'm sitting there going, hmm, if I could stimulate a phage to target virtually any bacteria I want to target, I wonder if I could do that for um, aspergillus. So we try it out. Sure enough, the patient's got better. They don't have any mold symptoms anymore and things like that. Of course, you have to clean up the environment they were living in. Otherwise, they're going to be reinfected. But the cool, the, the really amazing thing that we've discovered is if you could kill all the bacteria, all the bad guys of a certain type, let's say all the Borrelia of Lyme disease, virtually, comparatively speaking, in a very short amount of time, let's say four weeks of treatment, just to be generous, you would think, oh, well, I'm going to be magnificently well. But what we see is if there's damage, it's almost like termites in the wood of your house. If you get to it right away, like if you got bitten by a tick, you just got the bullseye rash, you just got in and we were able to do this new treatment on you. Yeah, it all goes away and your health comes flying back. But the termites that have been there for 20 years, you know, such as the, the Borrelia infections, the Babesias, the Bartonellas, the Ehrlichia, Anaplasmosis, all these other things all for 20 years, there's so much damage that even though you've killed successfully all of these different infections, the, the symptoms didn't just magically go away. You didn't just magically get out of the wheelchair every time. You have to be able to go in and, and fix the, the damage that's left behind. And just like with antibiotics, the best an antibiotic can do is 85% kill rate of any of the targeted bacteria, leaving 15% now mutated and potentially stronger, but you're hoping that the immune system will take care of that 15%, right? Okay. Well, what we're seeing is if your immune system isn't brought back up and the integrity of all the, all the pathways, the metabolic pathways of the body aren't repaired, then guess what? The next bad guy comes up, the next one and the next one. And even though we can kill them all, you can, you're just going to see another bad one that rises to the top of the pile. So it's really this, this illusion, especially in chronic illness, that, that the, the patients have generally been sold by their doctors, which is like, I'll be well when my doctor can kill all these bacteria. But what we're seeing with antibiotics now, and it's not just me saying it, it's not me, it seems very self-serving for me to say antibiotics are horrible and phage induction is, is wonderful. Um, but we now, the disease of chronic Lyme disease, I'm believing more now and now more than ever is actually a disease of the mitochondria. Okay? Yeah. So the energy production cells of the body inside of all the cells, which if you've if you've taken an antibiotic, let's say the very first step that a doctor does is put a patient on doxycycline. And it's well documented to damage the mitochondria. Now the idea is, well, you know, it'll go back to normal. Well, no, it doesn't necessarily. And now this person has this lifelong chronic, very predictable symptoms. If you put it side by side, mitochondrial symptoms versus chronic Lyme disease, they're identical. So now here I come along and I say, okay, I can get rid of the bacteria, but if I don't fix the mitochondria disease and I don't fix the, the information systems of the body and the structural aspects of the body, the functional aspects of everything in the body, get rid of the poisons they've gotten stuck in their tissues, we're not gonna see them get well. And I really honestly believe that a lot of chronic Lyme is actually chronic mitochondrial disease. So besides that, we're not doing anything new. <laughs> we're doing a lot new. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I mean, look, man, I, I listen to everything you just said. I don't really have much to disagree with uh, or, 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 I mean, we're, like I said, we're energetically and spiritually aligned. I mean, I will go deeper and I will say to you that no disease, regardless of what it is, 
is anything more than a spiritual amputation or stuck energy. Because as you know, David, at base energy, all we are is exactly what you just said. We are uh, biophotonic plasmatic charges or discharges right. of vibrating molecules and spiritual, hopefully oscillating waves, depending on where your vibration is on the scale. But it's like people, you know, create their reality through their words, thoughts, and actions. So if you take a meditate, a medication, you know, this happens all the time with people to me and they say like, you know, dude, I started taking this, you know, peptide, I, obviously I'm you and I'm mostly organic and pro, uh, you know, therapeutic and pro, uh, treating the root cause and not the symptomology, but you know, they, they create a, a, a wave thought pattern in their mind, you know, usually due to fear based thinking that then creates the biological perturbation you know, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You know, it's a heart palpitation, racing heart rate, can't sleep. You know, all these are the things that, that, that they create again, because it's a manifestation in the mind due to usually fear. Um, th if they understood again, that they were a waveform holographic fractal of the source, they wouldn't have these thoughts. They wouldn't be in fear. They knew that they were an eternal energy being a manifestation of spirit in a physical flesh encased meat suit. You know, they wouldn't even concern themselves with these things. It's like, I always tell them a lot of times without giving them answers, uh, you know, to do this or do that. I say, look, affirm this, I am healthy, whole and complete. And I am using X to extend my life or to live longer and stronger or whatever. And then, you know, create that or manifest that reality by those thoughts. And, and, and again, have like an abundant mindset, but people are the ultimate creators of their reality, as you know. Yeah. And if you get bit by a tick or you get bit by a mosquito or you get bit by anything or whatever it is that happens to you, if you then go into a manifested negative thought process of if it happens or it might, you know, a lot of people, as you know, think about getting cancer. Cancer runs in my family. Mm -hmm. My dad had colon cancer. My mom had uh, pancreatic cancer. And then they fear it and fear it and fear it. And then ultimately you vibrated into your existence because that which tends, that which stays in mind tends to manifest. Again, we are nothing more than what we think. Yeah, That's it's like say, are, energy is, can never be destroyed. It changes shape. I would say exactly. information is never destroyed either. Exactly. Everything exactly. is vibration. Your shirt, the clothes you wear, everything. <laughs> everything. You know, so, when you have a radio in this room, every... I, I can dial that radio to pull out 99.5 FM. Well, I didn't bring it into the room. It was already here. And it, all the information that sits on that frequency, I can hear the music. I can hear the news that's, that's riding on that 99 point, whatever I said, <laughs> radio frequency. Okay. It's the same in the human body. People say, well, how can you diagnose or figure out things inside the human body when that bacteria is encased in blood? It's like you can't see it that way. You see it as frequencies. You see yeah. it as just, right. you know, every cell phone frequency, every TV frequency, every cosmic frequency is in this room. And yet I can actually see that just this spectrum when I'm looking visually, when I test electromagnetically, we can actually now instead of just doing, you know, like a lot of the bio meridian tester type devices, computerized testing, it's just like a frequency. OK, it's like Lyme you know, bird, broccoli, whatever it is, you know, it's a frequency. Imagine yeah. you could take that and turn it into electromagnetic sentences to basically have a conversation with that patient's body to figure out, okay, yes, there are emotional frequencies stuck in the liver. And that's what's corrupting the software of the liver, which is causing referred pain to your shoulder, which is causing the frozen shoulder syndrome, cancel out that frequency that's causing it of that stuck emotion. And guess what? The shoulder moves brilliantly, maybe. So it's it's that kind of reality of like, okay, let's identify everything that's gone wrong in the human that's in front of me. And using their body like its own biocomputer, figure out exactly what it needs to actually correct that. And that's what we put people through. But the technology that we've developed now is just a tool. And I would encourage people to um, keep a a healthy expectation, you know, because people get all excited when they find out, oh yeah, we can just wipe out almost any kind of bacteria we want to now. And they go, well, then I'll be well. I was like, it is a battle. When you're sending a phage to fight a bacterium, they're not gonna just die readily. They're gonna fight inside your body. 
And the bacteria may win, the virus may win. If the virus wins, great, because they, they all disappear, they don't infect your body. They all basically die within four days of the last bacteria dying as well of that type. They're not gonna go kill some good bacteria because they only use the type of host that type of phage uses. Right. Okay, so if it's a staph infection, if it's a Borrelia infection, there's a specific staph phage, there's a specific Borrelia phage. Now, this is not to be confused with classical bacteriophage therapy, which goes and tries to find a bacteriophage from the environment and bring it and put it into your body. So this is a completely new concept that we've innovated here where it was the realization was in a recent study they did on 2000 people from around the world, they, they were able to identify as many as 32,000 different types of bacteriophages in the healthy human body. Matter of fact, they're saying, if you don't have a lot of phages, you're not gonna live that long. Okay, so it isn't about, oh my gosh, look at all these viruses I have in my body, which are phages, right? 32,000 different types. Unreal. Why would I want to go to try to find something outside of the body to do the job if I could actually essentially control phages that are inside your body already? They're not being attacked by your immune system. It's not going to activate your immune system. It's It just lives harmoniously inside your body to go do the job. So that's what we mean by the phageal immune system. On the planet, they say that phages kill 40% of all the bacteria populations on the planet every day. There's Unreal. a trillion, trillion uh, phage infections occurring every second on the planet. Wow. Okay. Same in your body. It's an impossibility that you have some sort of sterile bacteria that doesn't already have its own phage infection. And there's other types of phages we call polyvalent phages that we're believing we can enlist, almost like you're enlisting an army to go and do your bidding, like an army of assassins that will only kill this type of bacteria that I'm targeting. And it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, we've done it with MRSA. We've done it with all these other um, line. We published an article in December of 2022, no, 2021, about Lyme patients. 92% of the patients were found to be completely void of any kind of Borrelia infections, whether it was any number of types of Borrelia. I mean, 92% were 100% clear according to the most sensitive test ever developed for Lyme, which is the Felix Borrelia phage test, okay? I mean, you would think the world would come clamoring to get it, but it was like, man, people are stuck in their ways. They, they just go, it can't work that good. And I'm like, going, okay, how's it working for you? <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, but that's the world. We talked about it many times already in the show. I mean, people want the easy button. No one in today's day and age due to technological innovation really truly wants to do the work anymore. The way out is within. There is nothing that you need or can't find that isn't within you. Again, Yeshua Ben Joseph said the kingdom is within you. If there was one single thing in the Bible that's actually real, that was the statement. You know, there's a lot of fraud. There's a lot of basic fundamental principles that are correct, but so few people can discern what is truth from highly strategic error, but the kingdom is within you. And that statement was like, literally you have access to divinity through access to your higher self, which is the Christ, the Christos, the anointed being, you know, it's, it's crazy how little today people want to do the work. I mean, I literally just, well, it's an, it's insane. Well, and the idea, the cool thing about this is this new treatment will be available to the public. I mean, I'm not going to send it directly to the public. <laughs> you just interrupt me. I was going to tell you that that's the thing is like, you're going to have to send it direct, Doc, because they're not going to dig for it. <laughs> well, for, for now, we're still under the research phases of it. And um, we're going to be hopefully soon having a double blind independent research study that will verify all this just for the integrity of the product. Yeah. Because the world is going to come against this. Science is coming against this. I mean, they just find this. Yeah. Going, you know? yeah. I kind of like it that I didn't come from the hallowed halls of science because Thank God. I'm stuck in a box of thinking. I mean, honestly, this just was 
you'd never get to this. I had one doctor that talked to me. He was a PhD. And he once he understood what I was doing, number one, he said, you realize you're going to win the Nobel Prize for this. That's awesome. And I was like, no, they're probably not going to give it to me. But he, he then says, well, you've probably stumbled across something here. <laughs> I just laughed. I was like going, no one would stumble across this. Right. You know, what I mean about if I had been classically trained in classical bacteriophage therapy, I would probably have never come across this. But I like to say, you know, if if you put all the ingredients together for a cake and then you shove this gooey mass into the oven at the right temperature, you shouldn't be surprised that you pull out a cake. Yeah. Okay? So I very strategically used all the technologies that I've invented to come up with a system that makes it to where I can actually control the phages. And at the end of that, I pulled out that cake, which was the infections were gone. The patients felt dramatically better. Okay, to correspond, and I proved it with a lab test. I proved it with long-term lab testing using the most sensitive test ever developed. And still the world was like going, eh, that, that can't work. And I'm like, right. okay. well, then they want proof. And I'm like, well, how do I show phages in the human body? Because this isn't going to work in a Petri dish. Yeah. I'm trying to enlist phages from all over the body to go and attack these, these bacteria. Well, how do I show the world that happening when we can barely image a virus to start with. I mean, that that's my conundrum. I'm just like going, well, doesn't matter how many people we get well, apparently, doesn't matter how many lab tests are negative. Um, you know, it's just an interesting conundrum to try to figure out what in the world are we going to do to convince the people? And they'd rather continue taking these poisonous antibiotics, yeah. suffering horrible side effects, yeah. A lifelong predictable mitochondrial disease as a result of the antibiotics they've taken. It's crazy. Then do something like this. And of course, right now, yes, you do have to come to where the research is being done and, and, and go through the program of care and things like that. But ultimately, when we finally are able to release this to the world, it will be doctors that still, you know, give it to their patients. Yeah. So... Yeah. Because the last thing I want is somebody taking it and kind of going, well, that didn't work. And I'm like, you didn't have the training. You don't know what you're doing. You don't <laughs> understand that your health, your, you know, somebody with Lyme has almost identical symptoms to somebody poisoned with mercury. They, they have the same identical symptoms as a mitochondrial disease. They have identical symptoms to candida, systemic candida infections often. They have identical symptoms to a whole lot of different illnesses. It's called the great imitator. Yeah, Lyme is. I mean, it just imitates over 200 different diseases. So I'm like kind of going for the integrity. We have to have more and more and more science before we finally let the world, you know, have some of this. Dr. So, David Jernigan, you are an amazing creature and a man. And then this is in a profound conversation. If somebody wants to podcast with you, connect with you, uh, go deeper with you, uh, where, where would you have them go? I would have them call um, the Biologic Center for Optimum Health and um, just what go to biologiccenter.com and uh, we have the contact information right there and I'm easy to get to. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on this podcast today. You've been amazing. So guys and gals and all the people that uh, watch the Jay Campbell podcast. As always, please support the amazing people. Support Dr. David Jernigan. Go to his website. What is the phone number for uh, the place? I mean, it'll be in the notes, but just it'll so be I can in the notes. Okay, I don't cool. have it memorized, believe it or not. I don't <laughs> awesome. Good. I'm yeah, a yeah. to the technology. We're coming full circle. No, it's not it's not important. <laughs> so you guys remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.